guys it's emily from nobel novels and welcome to today's video this is my december wrap-up part two now i read a lot more books this month than i thought i had and i absolutely loved it before i go into the details on the books what i wanted to do was catch up and show you the books that i got given use my gift out my amazon gift voucher as a christmas present and the extra five books i bought now in my recent favorites video that i put up on monday on monday i had pre-recorded it didn't expect to buy more books, but you know me, I've been a bit naughty. So I thought I'll show you these at the start, just briefly show you them and then go into my wrap up. Because I'm warning you guys, this is probably going to be a long video. So the first book I bought was inspired by the lovely Nicole. This is The Prison Doctor by Amanda Brown. This is basically about a doctor that works in the prison and it's amazing. It's, oh, it looks a really sad, but it looks brilliant. Now I know Nicole's read it, I know that Simone is currently reading this as far as I'm aware and it looks brilliant so I bought that. I'm going to give my assistant Mia is down there bottom there. Then I've got Truly Madly Guilty which is inspired by the gorgeous Simone because we love reading the Anne Moriarty and the lovely Clint from Flaming Clint from Read Readers. I love that in both so much. So we're going to buddy read this in March just to give you a bit of info in advance. There you go, that's a good choice. Then I bought one that was inspired by the lovely Kate Howe. And this is The Life of Charlotte Bronte. Now you guys know I'm a massive Bronte fan. It's written by, the Eliz by Elizabeth Gaskell. And I'm a massive Elizabeth Gaskell fan. So of course I bought it. It's going right on my, on my shelf, bookshelves. It's that good. Then lastly, the book that was inspired by the amazing Tom from Tom Reads Things, The Last Hours. He spoke about this in one of his books. It's set in 1348, which is when about the time the death was going on, and it looks brilliant, it looks beautiful. I'm just a bit annoyed at myself, though, because I bought this on Amazon, and then when I went to the charity shop a few days later, I found it in sale for a pound, so I was a bit shh. Chris was not happy with me. Now I'm going to show you, like, just briefly show you five books I bought from some charity shops. I didn't do them all in one haul, it was a couple from each charity shop. You know, I needed a bit of a smiley, happy Christmas thing, because the kids are driving me insane. First one is 101 Dalmatians. That's going to be one that I'm going to be keeping. It's a classic as well as a children's book, so I love that. Don't need to tell you any more about that. And my map of you, you guys know I love Elis Isabel Broom, so that's an obvious one. It's about a holiday set in Greek, island of Xanthos. Probably said that wrong. It's a chick lit. I needed something to, I'll need a bit of a chick lit to make me smile at some point. Another Lee Charles books. It's well into the series. No idea what place in the series it is, but it's Lee Childs. I love it. Chris is going to love it. So it's for me and Chris. Another one, sort of it. This is historical fiction. So it's Good Doctor of Warsaw. It's set in 1914. So it's another World War II book. But it's set in Warsaw. So that's another area. So kind of, does that count as one of my extra goals that I'm going to be having this year? I wonder. Another one, but it's only a pound. So I had to pick that up. And lastly, a uh, book inspired by the gorgeous Nicole from A Beautiful Chaos of Books. She's got this. I think I'm going to probably be buddy reading it with the lovely Charlotte from Books and Bargains. Because she's got this. She wants to read it. I think a thriller will be probably good to read with her. She might keep me going if I get a bit scared. So anyway, those are the books that I've, been, that I've either bought or been, got, or been given. I could show you the stack of books that Charlie's lent, lent to me. But I won't because that would probably take a lot longer. If you guys want a Charlie book haul, let me know because she's lending me lots of books. We do a lot of book swaps. One of the advantages of being sister. Anyway, enough rambling. Shall I tell you the facts for this year? For this, for this month, sorry. This year's video is going to be going up on next Wednesday. That's another thing to tell you. I'm going to be doing a statistics video thanks to Tom. He, want, he inspired me to do this. I'm recording it tomorrow and it's going to be going up next Wednesday. So I want to look out for an extra video. But this is my December wrap up, so here we go. I've read a total of 27 books. Ah! How did I do that? No idea. Yes, I'm a massive reader. Two of those were all yearbooks, so that's cheated. I've only got one two star read. I've got one, two, three, three star reads. Two of them are three and a half stars. As for my four star reads, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's eight four star reads. That's not too bad. As for my five stars, it's one, two, three, four, five. Five five stories. This is for the second half, obviously. You guys would, I will put a link to my part one wrap up in the bottom. 
Should I get on and talk about them? Well, the first book was an audio, was a book that I got from the library, which was Molly on the March, and that's two stars. It was a YA book, um, so I'm not obviously going to talk about it too much. It was about the suffragettes, but it's set in Ireland, and it was set from a young girl's point of view. She wants to be a suffragette, but it was written in letter-style format, which I normally would like. But it's not enough about the suffragettes. It's more about like her and the girly stuff. And at my age, I don't, re I couldn't relate to it, and I didn't really like it. So that was two stars. If you want a suffragette book, you, you get drawn in by the cover. Still don't get it. It was two stars. I barely pushed myself through that. I hated it. If it wasn't a library book, I wouldn't have. Would probably have DNF'd it. So the first of my three star books was Go Set a Watchman by Harper Collins. Now you guys know that I loved, loved, loved To Kill a Mockingbird, but half by Harper Lee, but I didn't like Go Set a Watchman as it's the second in the series and I really struggled with it. It was an audio book and I wanted to like it, but I really didn't. It's sort of set following on I think about ten years after the first one and I really wanted to like it. I don't know if that by reading listening to it on audio, but I kind of didn't take on with it. It was alright, and I read it while I was doing stuff, but it was no way as good as To Kill a Mockingbird. The next one it was three and a half stars, which was my second audio book, and that was The Crown by I can't remember the name of the guy, Robert Thing. You guys would have seen the T V series. Um again, the only thing with this book with as an audio book was that it was quite jumpy, it went from different spans in time, which I really struggle with. Um, I think I do struggle with the timelines jump around. Um, so to me, that really wasn't very good. It's a lot about the English war hit, about the English royalty and the, our English royal family. And that was interesting. I found out lots of details I didn't expect. I really did enjoy it. But again, it was too jumpy. And I don't know whether it was the audio book being jumpy or what, but I didn't like it like I wanted to. The next one is the one I've got right in front of me. It's one that Charlie lent to me and I wanted to love it. I really did. It's I am, I am, I am. This is three and a half stars. Again, it's non-fiction. I've read quite a few non-fiction books this month. And um, it was, it is good. And it's about obviously the 17 brushes with death. As to whether to me that was quite close to the bone because obviously the amount of brushes of death I've had um or whether it was just the way i think it jumped to gain timelines you were hearing about the different things to happen so you kind of go through one of the things i will say i'm sorry looking at the, the contents you go through the different bits of her body that that were that she that she caused her near death so you've got like necks lungs body necks a couple of different ones and the timelines jump so you got you got 1977's one and then you go to 1993 that kind of thing and that can to me meant I got a bit lost and I wasn't sure how old she was at each bit and I couldn't connect it as well. I don't take away about what this author went through. Maggie O'Farrell must have gone through hell to have all these experiences. She, I have got another one, of, one or two of her other books, which I don't think are non-fiction. Um, and they are looking forward to reading them. But to me, because it was so jumpy, I got lost quite a bit and I struggled. So I'm sorry. It's only three and a half stars. I'm going to give you that. Set up a different pile here. I'm telling her what to do. Now, the next one was I go on to my four star books. So, again, I wish I had longer to talk about these books. And if any of these you want me to do separate reviews on, please let me know. First one is Wish Upon a Star by Trisha Ashley. I really like this book. It was a Christmas book that my auntie Julie lent to, that given me. And I really enjoyed it. This is set single mum Callie's life is all about her little girl. Her little girl was born with a heart defect. And when she has to give up her life and move in with her mum in the, the countryside... Her life sort of turns upside down. It's a romance book. I did kind of guess who she was going to end up with. Kind of wanted her to end up with the person. It's cosy. It's lovely. It's a cushy, perfect Christmas book. And I really enjoyed it. Not five star enough. And it just about got four stars. Because I did predict quite a lot of it. But there were some sudden twists and turns. I fell in love with the guy. The baker guy, Jake Yeager. I think I can't even say his name. He's lovely and he sort of unlocks her heart and it's really sweet and cosy. It was just a lovely Christmas read. Now the next one, oh, this is so hard. It's four stars, but if I think if I would have read the whole series, it would have gone up to five. Christmas, a gift from Woolworths. My mum's lent me this, so it's going to go back to mum. I need to read the whole series. It's actually the last in the series. So I think if I would have read the whole series, I probably would have enjoyed it even more, I think. But it's beautiful. It's sort of set about four ladies, Betty Billington, Frida, Maisie and Sarah. And their own sort of histories have got like quite a lot of traumas happening. It's towards the end of the World War II, this one. But it is really enjoyable and I really loved it. And 
yeah it's another cozy but i definitely think i need to start at the top of the series and then work my way down so that's what i'm going to be looking for so the first one if anyone knows about where it's find it cheap let me know the next one's a library book non-fiction book i read it christmas day and christmas eve it's by Lucy Worsley. You guys know I love Lucy Worsley. And it's actually about all like non-fiction in the house. How all this sort of stuff like the ha like the bedroom, the kitchen, how everything started off. It's got some gorgeous pictures in the middle of it. It's beautiful. It's actually a new book to the library. I can't see if I can show you, but you can see some of the history books. It's really, really good. It non-fiction, so it can't go too high in my ratings. I find it hard to rate a non-fiction book five stars, but this is really good. Lucy Worsley does not let herself down. It's a home and family. It's a new release, but it's really good. The next one's another library book that I brought out from the library. It's a new library book. So it's actually one of Debbie McComber's most recent books. And it is A Mrs. Miracle Christmas. And you know that she's had an angel sent from heaven to help someone and help a family. It's cosy. It's a beautiful read. Christmas was magical. And this one's second... Debbie McComber book that I read this month and it does not disappoint. It's really good. Um, ne Mrs. Miracle sent down to help um, Laurel McCorrick's grandmother has Alzheimer's. Now that, to me that's hard hitting obviously because my aunt, my man, my nan had Alzheimer's before she died. Um, and then they're looking, they're searching for a baby. They couldn't have a baby of their own so they want a baby but they don't think it's possible. Mrs. Miracle helps in more ways than you can ever imagine. And I loved it and it was cosy. Now the next one, I've got, da, 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 I'm trying to think where I'm looking on my list. See, I don't think I've put things in order. This is The Art of Being Normal. This is a book, an LGBTQYA book, LGBTQ plus YA book. So David longs to be a girl, Leo longs to be invisible. And da when Leo stands up for David in the fight, an unlikely friendship forms. This has a lot of twists and turns. It's sort of really stands out to me because of the LGBTQ plus issues on the male point of view. A lot of books I've read in that day have been set on the female's point of view, but this is set on a male's side, mainly point of view. And it's really quite interesting. It's quite hard hitting. Um, the things that the, the, these characters both go through is quite tough. And the bullying is quite hard. It's set in England as well. So you can actually imagine these things happening to people. And I hate that idea. I hate that anyone could be bullied for being who they are. I'm quite pro people having the right to be whatever they want to be. Um, so I did really enjoy this book. The cover doesn't give it credit. It's a really good book. And I'm going to give it back to the charity shops so that someone else can read that. Now the next one is a four and a half stars because as a classic, it was really hard. It's near five. I don't know whether it'll go up. This is The Hound of the Baskervilles. I've literally just finished this a minute ago. It's so good. I didn't think I'd like Sherlock Holmes. I'm not a major mystery fan, but I loved it. And this is a really, really good book. First in the series of Sherlock Holmes books, and it definitely does not disappoint. I cannot wait to read more. And Charlie, I'm going to be borrowing a lot more of these books off you. Loved Arthur Conan Doyle. Though I think I need to get more mystery and detective books. But I loved it. So yeah, does not disappoint one bit. Another one that now I'm going into my five star books. The first five star book that I've got on my list, I don't have have with me because it was one at the library. It was Angels in the Snow and it was by the lovely Sarah Morgan. Sarah Morgan does not disappoint. I wish I could remember more about the Angels in the Snow book, but it was amazing. And I would definitely say that Sarah Morgan does not disappoint. She is still one of the best chick lit, class, chick -lit authors around. She's really impressed me and never let me down. Now, the next one is, what am I going to show you? I'm going to show you the first term at Mallory Towers. Oh, I've just realised I've got another four star, but I didn't show you because I'm a donut and I didn't do things in the right order. The Christmas Shop Harlick by Sophie Kinsella. This is, I think this was four slash four and a half stars. Sophie Kinsella does not disappoint. I need to reread all the Shopaholic books and I guess another series I'm going to reread in January. So the reread, it will go for the rereadathon that, that the lovely Alex Black and Ma Ma Abby McComp Abby's doing, Abby from Abby Mac Reads. I think I need to reread the series. So I'm going to look for all of those, if not slash Vicky, I'll be borrowing them off of you. I don't know if she's watching this, but I need to get the Sophie Kinsella books and reread the series because I think I've kind of missed a few in the series. And that would have probably, again, rated it up to five stars. But I really love that. Christmas, Sophie Kinsella never disappoints. She's a good, cosy, chick lit author. There you go, Mia. That's a heavy one. Now, the next one, I think I will show you this one. I can't talk about it again because it's a middle grade book. But it's the first time at Mallory Towers. 
really loved it. Definitely rereading that series, although I've got a couple of the books I need to find before I carry on, I think. I need to, I can't really carry on without finishing, getting the rest of the books in the series, so. But again, I loved it. Enid Blyton does not disappoint. Now, The Sisters of Actress. This is another library book. Um, it's a true story. It's non-fiction. Another new book to the library. Um, you guys know I'm intrigued. It's not like it's a happy book. The Auschwitz is not a happy book. It can't be happy because of what happened there. But these two sisters end up there. And it, this is a history about how they got there and then what happens afterwards. It's a very big journey about what happened. They actually really went there. So these sisters, I'm trying to remember the names. So it's Jan, Janny and Leanne. I've probably said the names wrong. But they are, they basically have built a hideout. Um, they're two Jewish sisters set in the Netherlands and they end up making another big safe house. And it's kind of, they, their actual story interconnects with Anne Frank's story because they end up at Auschwitz with Anne Frank and Margot, their sister. They have a bit of connection with their, with their mum. And I find, to me, that was finding out more about Anne Frank's history because I love The Diary of Anne Frank. It was one of my best books I've ever. It's one of my favourite childhood books, books as I read as a teenager. And this interlinks with that and I found that really interesting. I loved this book and I loved hearing out, hearing their history. Yes, it's hard hitting. Don't go into this book thinking it's easy. But if you see this in the library or if you see this in the charity shops, get it because it's blooming fantastic. This also is amazing. Historical non-fiction. It's brilliant. It's one of the best books I've read this year, this month, to be honest. Although it's nothing to do with Christmas at all. Now, the next one, I'm going down and I'm telling you the next one. Um, I've also got... Da -da -da, I'm just trying to double check. This is the Christmas books. I am going to be honest with you. When I say this book was five stars, it's five stars for the Christmas Carol bit. I didn't like the rest of it. I didn't like the chimes or the cricket on the heart. I didn't understand it. Had to read it. Blew through it. Didn't like it. I'm not going to enter more. Five stars is for the Christmas Carol because the Christmas Carol is one of the best. And rereading that was freaking fantastic. Charles Dickens writes it amazingly. And rereading it with his words, not just on the films, is amazing. Now I'm going to end on the best book I read this month. And this is a book that I've, I've now started it. I can't believe I'm only now reading this. Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. It's the first in the Dark Material series. I was reluctant to read this because I watched The Golden Compass and hated it. My kids love it. I don't. I hate it. But this is friggin' amazing. It's the first in the trilogy that I've got down in my cup and my jam my uncle got me. It is one of it is my favourite book of the month, apart from I think it's my joint favourite. My favourite part of the second month. The other joint favourite was obviously um my book that I read with Tom and I cannot remember the name of it. So I'll look that up in a second. But yeah. Burial Rights was my other favourite. So this is my joint favourite and it's the second I buddy read this with the lovely Gaia and Clint technically, because he was supposed to be reading it. I don't know if he's even finished it. This is amazing. If you've not read Dark Materials, Reread it. I'm going to be reading the second one in March now. I think I'm going to read it in March with Clint. This is Lyra Bequine, I can't even say. And her animal demon live half wild and carefree among the scholars of Jordan College in Oxford. Their destiny awaits and it will take her to the frozen lands of the Arctic, where witch clans reign and bear, ice bear fights. This is exciting. This is thrilling. This is scary at points. This is exciting. This is lovable. There are bits where I'm like, how the hell can this be YA? Because it was quite sort of scary. But it's brilliant. Um, I can't wait to carry on the series. I can't believe it's taken me so long to read Dark Materials. Everyone likes the Dark Materials series and now I know why. It's amazing. This and Burial Rights are my joint favourite books of the month. December was an amazing month. I read way more books than I expected. But what was your favourite book of the month? Let me know in the comments below. I can't wait to hear. And I hope you all had the best December. Like I said, this is coming out on the Friday. Next next month is when I start all my 2000 sort of wrap up books, the ones that I say about what books I'm, what my favourite books are going to be coming out, my statistics. Next month, next, in the next few weeks, I'll be giving out statistics. Bear with me, guys, because in the, as this book's come out on Friday, the following Monday, we'll be having my operation, so I may not be able to message back as quickly. Um, so bear with me, okay, in the start of January, because it's going to be a bit of an interesting time for me. Anyway, I hope you all have a great, great December. If you like this video give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel and not subscribed yet ring on my ding-a-ling and i hope you all have the best december ever yay bye bye